Mississippi is too often defamed, dismissed, and disrespected, hurting our communities and our economy. We're better than that. And I know I owe Mississippi more than I can say. I work to correct the stereotypes and attract companies and jobs to Mississippi. I'll give our young people a greater sense of respect for themselves and for others. I'm Mike Espy, and I approve this message because I believe in Mississippi, and it's time to show the nation just how far we've come. That is Democratic candidate Mike Espy. He was the first African-American to win a congressional seat in Mississippi since Reconstruction, and now he's trying to become the first black senator in Mississippi since Reconstruction as well. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Cal Perry, who recently traveled to Mississippi and followed Espy on the campaign trail. Cal, good morning. What did you find out? Good morning, Willie. So listen, the African-American vote could be the difference maker in a number of these races across the country. For Mike Espy, however, it's playing out on hallowed ground. You gonna vote? Mm -hmm. All right. You gonna vote for yes. me? Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna help everybody, including you. There's something going on around the country. Right. Yeah, some people say it's a blue wave. Right. Is Mississippi gonna continue that or does it stop in Mississippi? I mean, you have an uphill climb. It's, it's an uphill climb, but I've climbed uphill before. SP is the first black since Reconstruction to win a congressional seat from Mississippi. I'm excited. Uh, appreciative and humble to be asked to serve this nation. So where has Mississippi been? Where are we going? And are you, are I mean, you? We're right here in Fair Street, and Fair Street really uh, doing the Jim Crow era was a black mecca of Mississippi. So it's fallen a little bit now into disrepair, and I'm glad that you decided to have this yeah, interview in this, in this restaurant has oh, been here since hey, 1939, because yeah, it shows where we've been and where we have to get to again with a little bit of attention, with, with a little bit of concentration with someone who really cares about the economic status of Mississippians. And now I'm talking about not just black, but all Mississippians. Right. I don't look at race so much as I look at uh, economic possibilities, common ground for everyone regardless of race. Oh, this is very much in line with the ideas of Fannie Lou Hamer. Are you afraid of being killed? I think about it sometimes. In what way? When somebody called and said, we have you located, we're going to put you in Mississippi River. Talk to me a little bit about Mississippi. Why do African Americans need to get out and vote in this election? Because it's important for us. You know, uh, Meg Evers? In a vacant lot about 40 yards away, a sniper fired a single shot from a high-powered rifle at Evers' silhouette. He died for us. And when he died fighting for us, I don't miss a vote. I vote. And we are saying to Mississippi, Give us the ballot. Give us the ballot and we will transform the salient misdeeds of bloodthirsty mob into the calculated good deeds of orderly citizens. A million nights, I don't know if I'd get back home or not. Uh, and we broke the barrier and we're there now. We are going to make this old, broke down Mississippi a new Mississippi. How do we remind the next generation of how important the sacrifices were? By educating them. We have to tell the stories. We have to show them the way to the poll. We have to take them. None of our dead heroes took it for granted. My husband put his life on the line daily, not knowing if he's going to come back home because he was trying to educate people to vote going on plantations at night after the boss man had gone to bed, registering people to vote, getting them to learn how to write their name for the first time. This race does go through the black community. Okay, I'm not, I'm not pretending that it doesn't. There's something happening in the South. There's a new South that's rising. We are not going back to the old South. This is a new South that is inclusive to everybody. Sometime I'm hopeful. And uh, sometimes I doubt it, <laughs> but eventually it's going to happen. So this is a three-way race, and it will be until November 6th, at which point two candidates will go off until November 27th. Uh, Willie, listening to Joe talk about why people should get out and vote, uh, this is our story. This is America's story. This is uh, all the more reason to get out and vote. Listen, maybe with Donald Trump, we had to hit rock bottom before we can rebuild. I'm not sure, but... Certainly in Mississippi, mm. that's their hope. Eddie, you're a Mississippi native. The latest poll here has the Republican Cindy Hyde-Smith at 38, Mike Espy at 29, another Republican Chris McDaniel at 15. It certainly looks like a runoff. We were talking about the demographics of the state that you come from. 
African American population, mm -hmm. the highest percentage of any state in the country. If there is turnout in this state, Mike Espy has a chance. Yeah, he said he has a, a, a hard, a, a steep hill to climb, but he's climbed hills before. Uh, there's a wonderful line in James Baldwin's The Fire Next Time that we have to do the impossible. Uh, and we have a history of doing the impossible. Um, you know, I come from a state that its soil is soaked in blood. You know, there's Fannie Lou Hamer, there's Medgar Edvers, I'm thinking about Amzi Moore, I'm thinking about all of those unsung heroes and heroines who made me possible. Um, this election is more than just about Mike, Epps, uh, Mike, Mike Espy. It's about our democracy. And, you know, we've been in some, so many ways uh, a clarion call for it. Uh, and so we will see uh, if we turn out. If black folk turn out in the United States across these districts, uh, we can change the direction of the country. And as always, Mississippi is a metaphor for America. We will mm -hmm. see. We will see, mm -hmm. Ken. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, John, John Meacham, uh, uh, black voters certainly showed up in Alabama last year. Uh, I had Alabama officials telling me, even on election night, that the turnout wasn't big enough uh, to put Doug Jones over the top. But then... Uh, the black belt, as it's called, across central Alabama came out in numbers as high uh, as uh, they came out for Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012. Uh, it, that in and of itself, one of the most extraordinary uh, political events that's happened since Donald Trump was elected. Yeah. Two thoughts. One is, we, 50 years ago, 13 days from now, George Wallace carried Mississippi in the presidential election. He won 13.5% of the national vote and carried five states on an explicitly segregationist and nationalist platform in, in many ways. And so 50 years is at once a long time ago and in another sense it's the day before yesterday. The older I get, the more it seems like the day before yesterday. Uh, the other thought here is you know, what we're seeing with the Georgia and the Secretary of State who says he'll adjudicate his own election and questions about voter suppression, it's a reminder, Cal is a reminder that the most significant and the bloodiest struggle in many ways was not just against Jim Crow and public accommodations, but for the right to vote. Exactly. And it's what, and if you're, if you're in Georgia, or Alabama, or Mississippi, or Arkansas, or Tennessee, Florida. This was the great struggle to the great domestic drama of the 20th century. Hmm. We were able to defeat tyranny abroad more easily in some ways than we were at home. And it seems to me, one of the reasons I'm ultimately hopeful about the Republic is that our mission is to create a more perfect union, not a perfect one. But it begins, as John Lewis would tell us, with the franchise, with the vote. And I think, I think, we, I think we, we dismiss the, the gravity of, of those struggles too, too glibly sometimes. And I think we, we're in this moment where there's such a lack of seriousness from the White House about these issues that I think ultimately, as, as you say, Joe, is going to be a motivator, not a suppressor. Mm -hmm. it, so. it, it is going to be a motivator. And if you look at what John Lewis wrote uh, yesterday, yeah. talking about the sacrifices that oh, he made, yeah. John Lewis saying, I have been beaten, my skull fractured and arrested more than 40 times mm -hmm. so that each and every person has the right to register and vote. Friends of mine gave their lives. Do your part. Get out there and vote. <laughs> like you've never voted before. Hashtag vote. Wow. Hashtag good trouble. And Yamish, uh, so much does depend on, on how, uh, who decides to go out and vote, what segment of, of America decides to go out and vote, which segments are the most motivated. That will determine our future, or shape our future.
it will absolutely shape our future. And I think people, especially African Americans that I've talked to in the last couple of weeks, they understand the struggle. They understand what it means to get out the right to vote and to, and, and what people had to sacrifice to get their to, to allow African Americans to vote. The thing that I will say though is that that when the president is using these nationalist terms, he's doing that because he's trying to get his people out to vote. He's trying to counter the the wave that we know is coming in African Americans because for more than two years people have watched the president use language that they found to be deeply offensive and racist. And then there are of course the people who support the president who say that's a distraction that he's not someone who's using that language. But what, we, what I will say is also this: after Alabama, there was this feeling that black people saved Alabama, that their vote was the reason why Doug Jones came into office. But I think there's a, there's something that's very dangerous about that, which is that there are African Americans who say, "Don't blame the the, the, the Senate not going to Democrats on African Americans mm -hmm. not turning out, as if 50 percent of the country doesn't turn out." There are white people who who watch the TV and they don't turn out at all, and they don't get blamed when Doug Jones doesn't doesn't win. So I think in this case, as much as uh, there is this importance for black people to go out and vote, there should also be the day after the election a very careful look at how we talk about black people voting because if Stacey Abrams doesn't win, it's because a lot of white people might have turned out and not so much that black people didn't do enough. All right, Amisha and Cal Perry, thank you for that report. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.